In this video, I wanna show you how you can pull the top three most motivated seller lists on PropStream so that you can start targeting these sellers today. Hey, if you're new to this channel, my name is James Hodges, and this channel is all about teaching you how to scale your business to seven figures and build it in a way where it can run without you. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you a deep dive into PropStream, which is a software that you can use to pull motivated seller lists. And if you're trying to build a wholesaling business or a flipping business, then you want to make sure that you're getting in front of the most motivated sellers that you can. And PropStream is an excellent tool that you can utilize to get in front of seller leads and you can pull these lists really quickly. And it's a really low cost service that you can utilize. Now check the link in the description below if you want a free trial to PropStream. All right, let's dive into exactly how to pull the three most motivated seller lists that you can pull on PropStream. All right, I've got PropStream pulled up here. And the first thing that I typically do whenever I go into PropStream to pull a list is I am going to type in a city. I've already got a city typed in here. And what you do is you just go into the search bar, type whatever city that you were looking for. I typically do the city level. Some people do the county level. It just depends on the size of your county or city that you're targeting. But for sake of this example, I'm going to target Dallas, Texas. And then we want to go to the filter section. And um, before we go to a quick list option, because you can use these quick lists and these quick lists are great. They can be great, but we wanna make sure that we are targeting sellers who are most likely to sell their house. So we wanna make sure that we put some data points into this list and we don't wanna just target anybody under these quick list choices. So first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna go residential because we wanna target single family homes and then we're gonna go property and we're gonna go single family, condo or townhouse, multifamily two to four, and you could do multifamily five plus if you wanted to. Now, if you just want to focus on single family, this is what you would put in the description right now. Now, some people like to target mobile homes. Um, that's a personal preference. I will say when you, whenever you get into mobile homes, sometimes um, you have to filter through more junk leads in order to find the good leads. So um, now, Typically, bedrooms, bathrooms, I don't mess with because there are many counties that you can't even tell. They, they won't even tell you how many bedrooms and bathrooms. Something that I um, typically will utilize, though, is year built. So typically, I'm going to go back to 2010 as the year built. Some people go back even further. The further back that you go, the more distress the property likely can have. So if you go back to, you know, 1995 or 2000, that means the property is aged more and it could have more distress with it. But I prefer to do wholesaling and novations. And with novations, typically newer properties work better for novations. So I go back to minimum year built. We're going to put nothing. And then 2010 is going to be the max. And um, that's about it that I'm going to do here. Um, sometimes I will do building size and I may put a high end of 3000 and we can just put that in. Now you can see over here that this list will start to build. Here we go. MLS status. I want to make sure that we are targeting properties that are not listed on the MLS. So MLS, I'm going to select no. And then, um, if you want to target pre foreclosure, you can through here and then ownership info. Typically, I'm going to go years of ownership. I'm going to target a minimum of five years of ownership, maximum. You know, I don't want to put a maximum there. And then when I'm going after sellers, I want to just do individuals. I don't want to go after corporate owned uh, properties because that typically means this is going to be a more sophisticated seller. And then also, this is something that a lot of people look over years of ownership because I put five in here. I'm going to show you this just for an example. When you when you take off years of ownership, if you don't have anything in here, there is not an unknown option. But whenever I put five in here, you can see this right here, this checkbox appeared that says include unknown sale dates. Now, what you can do is you can watch over on this number. So right now it says 114,677. If I include unknown sale dates, 
that jumped to 157,000. That's because Dallas is in Texas. Texas is a non-disclosure state, meaning there are a lot of undisclosed sale dates. And so if I don't include the unknown sale dates, I'm missing out on a lot, a lot of opportunities. Now, I will also say that whenever you include unknown sale dates, sometimes you have people that recently purchased the property, but many times it includes people who have purchased the property a long time ago and the prop stream records are not pulling up when the property was sold because it was sold so long ago. So I want to include those records in here. It just means that I'm going to get some leads that um, were recently sold, but that's okay because we are going to get great leads in there as well. Lean bankruptcy, just for my normal um, list, I'm not going to put anything in there. Valuation and equity information, this is really important to include. So we are going to go in here and we are going to do, now for me personally, I do 30% as minimum equity and I will also go down and I am going to include unknown equity. Now there's a checkbox down below that allows you to include unknown equity right here. And that's this checkbox right here. You have to select this option if you want to include unknown equity. Now I'm going to unselect it just to show you guys. Um, so when I go 30 to 100, 100%, max is 100%. When it, that number is 145,000, if I include unknown equity, it adds 10,000 extra properties. Now I have gotten so many deals. I cannot tell you how many deals that I've done that have unknown equity. And um, it's because you know some, some properties aren't recorded. They can't tell how much equity there is. And many times I will go after just an unknown equity list, but you can't do that in PropStream. I use a, a service called List Source for just an unknown equity list. Now, as far as this area goes, I'm also going to put a max assessed total value. Now, typically I'm gonna go after properties that are under $400,000 as a total assessed value. The reason being is because I wanna stay in more of a median home price range and in Dallas, 400000 is going to keep me in that median home price range and a lower tier house range so that I'm staying out of you know high value houses, which typically means that it's going to be a more sophisticated seller. That means that it's going to be a seller that's harder to negotiate with. Now, you can go over here to mortgage information. Typically, I don't mess with, mess with anything here. Now we can go into our quick list options. Now that we have our base criteria, this is the base criteria that we're going to build all of our lists on. Now we can go into our quick list options. And one of my favorite lists is a vacant house list. And so if I select the vacant house list, there are 1,587 properties and I can create a list here. I would just select this and then I would go to add to list and create a list. And then I would go to my properties and then you can pull the list there. So vacant house list is one of my favorite lists because if the house is vacant, there's a reason why it's vacant. And if you have all of these criteria points in there, that means that, you know, you're targeting a house that should give you a really good chance of getting a deal. Another list that I really like if you're looking to get started in wholesaling, or if you're looking for a list that can give you an option for getting deals quickly, I really like the tax delinquent list as well. You can see over here, there's 22,000 records for the tax delinquent list. Sometimes I will just pull all of this. You can, if you want to, you can come over here to the liens and you can do the lien amount. You can do $2,000 for the lien amount and you can watch this number. It goes down to 1147 uh, or you can do the tax delinquent year and you can do a minimum of two years. If you do a minimum of two years, you can see that there's 22,182. Now for this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all of these, but if you want to narrow it down, you can actually go in here and you can type the tax delinquent year and you can do 2020. And if you do 2020, that's going to cut off a good portion of those. That means that these properties have been delinquent for at least two years. That's going to bring it down to 19,000 records. Now, this is a large list. If you wanted to narrow this list down even more, you can 
play with the equity percentage. You can go in here and say 60 or more percent equity. You could target zip codes instead of Dallas, all of Dallas if you wanted to. But these 19,000 records right here are hot records to target. So we want to make sure that we are targeting these records. I always want to make sure that I'm targeting tax delinquencies because they are behind on their property taxes. That means that they are behind for a reason. Most of the time it's because they're in financial distress. And a lot of times that means that they are going to be looking to sell a house pretty quickly. Now, I'm going to show you the third, my third favorite list that I like to target inside of PropStream. So we're going to go tax delinquent. We're going to remove that. So we got to remove this in order to open up our list criteria again. And we remove tax delinquency up here. So last list that I'm going to show you guys right here is going to be a tired landlord list. Now with a tired landlord list, this is a fantastic list to target because these are absentee owners who have owned their property for a long period of time and they have equity in their house. And um, typically the landlords who have owned their house for a long period of time are the ones who are most likely going to want to sell their house. So that's why they're called tired landlords. Now with a tired landlord list, again, you can see this is 14,000 records. Now, if you pull this list, if you pull the tax delinquent list, if you pull the vacant house list, those are three incredible lists to start with. And I guarantee you that if you target these lists, you will be able to pull a deal out of these lists. You can target them with texting. You can target them with cold calling. Um, you can target some of these lists with direct mail or if you, if you wanted to, but the cheapest, most efficient options to target these lists, as far as a marketing standpoint goes, is going to be with SMS, cold calling, maybe even voice broadcast and RVM if you're in a state that allows you to do voice broadcast and RVM. And these are some of my go-to lists to target if you want to get a deal really quickly. Hey, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did find the video helpful, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up so that we know that you enjoyed it and we can make more videos like this in the future. Also, make sure to leave a comment down below in the comment section if you have any questions so that we can get your questions answered ASAP. And then lastly, if you want more training every single week on how to grow your wholesaling or flipping company to the seven figure level and beyond, make sure to click the subscribe button and turn all of the notifications on so that you never miss a training video on how to grow your wholesaling business to seven figures and beyond.